I think there's one thing that everyone can agree on, and that's that we're living in a world that's changing more rapidly than ever before. Things that we learn today might be obsolete tomorrow. We all recognize the world is changing incredibly quickly. So because of that, learning particular you know, you know, facts or skills today might not be useful in the future. The thing that is most important in a rapidly changing world is the ability to think and act creatively. Because no matter what situation you're in, we know that you'll be confronted by new and unexpected problems in the future. So we don't know exactly what those problems will be or what those unexpected situations will be. But if we help people develop as creative thinkers, they'll be well prepared for a world that's constantly changing. Now, unfortunately, uh, the education system today is not set up to help prepare people to develop as creative thinkers. Uh, the education system was set up for a time where people learned what they needed to learn you know, from age six to 18, and then they used that knowledge the rest of their life. We need to shift around our priorities in education so that we put a higher priority in preparing young people to think and act creatively so they can come up with innovative solutions to the, cre to the unexpected situations that we know will await them. So as I've thought about how is it that we can prepare people to become creative thinkers, I've looked around and I've gotten a lot of my inspiration from the way children learn in kindergarten. But so I think kindergarten gets people off to a, right, to, to a good start as creative thinkers. If you think about the traditional kindergarten, kids spend a lot of time in kindergarten you know, playfully creating things in collaboration with one another. They build towers out of blocks. They you know, build pictures, they create pictures with finger paints and crayons. In the process, they learn a lot. When they build with blocks, they learn about stability, what makes things stand up or fall down. Uh, when they make pictures with crayons and finger paints, they learn how colors mix together. But maybe even more important, they learn about the creative process. They learn about how to start with an idea, explore the idea, and follow it through uh, and continue to develop a project based on a creative idea. So I think kindergartens, at least traditional kindergartens, have helped children start to develop as creative thinkers. But then after kindergarten, kids get into the rest of the school system where they sit there, they fill out worksheets, they listen to lectures, and it takes away their development as creative thinkers. Unfortunately, in many places, kindergartens are becoming more like the rest of school. You go into kindergartens today, and in many places, kids are filling out mathematics worksheets and you know, exercises and doing phonics drills, and they aren't doing the type of playful, collaborative, creative activities that they'd done in the past. So kindergarten is becoming more like the rest of school. What I'm arguing for is that we need to make the rest of school, in fact, the rest of life, more like kindergarten. Uh, so what is it that is special about this kindergarten approach? I sometimes think of the kindergarten approach to learning. I call it the creative learning spiral. So it's a spiral that goes, it starts from imagination and then creating playing, sharing, reflecting, and imagining. You might see in a kindergarten that one day kids will come in with an idea that they want to build a fantasy city, and they pull out the blocks, and they start building a tower with the blocks. So this is their imagination. They start with imagination. They imagine a city. But again, it's not enough to imagine. Just ideas are not enough. Imagination is not enough. They start creating with their blocks. So they go from imagine to create. As they create, they also are playing. And when I think of play, I think of a process of experimenting. But as they're playing with the blocks, they start to see, how can I make this taller? What, you know, which blocks will work best for making my tower the, the, the tallest or the biggest? So they're constantly experimenting and trying new things. They also will start sharing with one another. Someone might start to build a house and someone will build a restaurant next to it and someone else will build a road and move cars back and forth. So they'll start sharing and getting ideas from one another of how to improve. Now, as they're doing this, what probably will happen in a kindergarten is somebody will knock over the tower and they'll start arguing. 
but that's also a good opportunity for learning. And part of the role of the teacher is to help children reflect on what happened and what went wrong and how they might do it differently. The teacher might show them a picture of a skyscraper and the children will notice that it's wider at the base than at the top. And that gives them a new idea and they'll start building a new tower that's wider at the base to try to make it more stable so it won't fall so easily. So they've gone through this process of imagining, creating, playing, sharing, reflecting, sparking new imaginations. And I think that's what makes kindergarten a very rich learning experience. We can use that same process everywhere. Here where I work at the MIT Media Lab, we use that same process in our own work. When we're developing new technologies in my research group, we go through that same creative learning spiral. We use our, imagine new ideas, we build prototypes, we try it out with others, we get feedback from pe other people, we reflect on our own experiments and the feedback, and that sparks new idea, and we go around that spiral over and over. And I think that's what makes the Media Lab such a creative, innovative place, because our approach is like kindergarten. Now, of course, we use different technologies than in kindergarten. We use laser cutters and microcontrollers, not just crayons and finger paints and wooden blocks, but the process is the same. So as I see it, I really think that it works in the traditional kindergarten. It works in places like the Media Lab. We just have to change the rest of the world. Uh, and that's a big part of what we're trying to do in my research group. Actually, my research group is called the Lifelong Kindergarten Group. We want to take those ideas of kindergarten but stretch them through a lifetime. So we're constantly developing new technologies, new strategies, new activities, new settings that use that kindergarten approach to allow people of all ages uh, to be able to continue to learn in that kindergarten style. And I do think this is a place where new technologies can make a big difference because we think, well, why is it that the kindergarten approach has not been adopted you know, through the rest of the school system. Now, there are, there are probably many reasons for this. There are certain ways in which, you know, schools want to control in a certain way and they have a certain model of this system. But I do think it's partly because of the technologies and materials and media that we've had at our disposal. You know, the technology of kindergarten, wooden blocks and finger paint, are great for learning the concepts of kindergarten, number and shape and size and color. But if you're not five years old, but 10 years old, or 15 years old, or 25, or 45, or 65 years old, just wooden blocks and finger paint aren't enough. So that's one reason why in the past, the education system has shifted to just delivering information, because we haven't had the right materials and technologies to allow people to learn in a kindergarten style. But this is where I think that new technologies, if we use them the right way, can make their biggest impact that we can design new technologies that in the spirit of the wooden blocks and finger paints of kindergarten can allow people to learn in a kindergarten style, but to work on more advanced projects than kindergarten children and learn more advanced ideas. So we want to develop technologies that engage people in kindergarten style learning, but to work on much more advanced projects and to learn more advanced ideas to develop sophisticated simulations on the screen, to learn new types of scientific ideas, to build new types of engineering robotic devices, to learn new types of engineering ideas. So to build more advanced projects, but to sustain that kindergarten approach. Because we really you know, see that what's most important for success and satisfaction in today's society is for people to develop as creative thinkers. I think nothing is more important for individuals, for companies, for communities, for nations as a whole. The key to success at all levels will be the ability to think and act creatively. So we have to make sure that young people develop as creative thinkers. As we've worked on new learning and education approaches, I've been very influenced by the great philosopher and educator John Dewey, who about 100 years ago, started what was called the progressive approach to education. And I always liked one line from John Dewey. He said that his approach was simple but not easy. So it meant that he could simply describe why it was important, but it wasn't easy to implement. And I think that's true with what we're suggesting as well. 
there's some core ideas that are very clear and simple, but it's not easy to implement. One thing, we want to make sure that everybody is able to design and create things based on their own interests. But that means we can't have everybody in the class doing exactly the same thing, which means that it's a different type of management challenge for the educator. In some ways, it's easier for an educator to just say, okay, today, follow this, these set of instructions. Everybody is going to build this robot, follow these instructions. You'll be graded on how well you follow the instructions. And that's the way many schools operate. And sadly, some of the technologies that we've developed, like the you know, robotics kits, when we go into classrooms, we see them used that way, and it really frustrates me and saddens me that it's not used to develop as creative think to, to develop creative thinking. It's just used to learn how to build according to recipe. Uh, that happens because people know how to manage that process better. But children are gonna learn best when they're following their own interests, their own passions. So I want to give that same robotics kit to many different people, but let them follow their own interests. Like we had a workshop where we gave these robotics kits to children, and you know, uh, children were 10 to 13 years old, and one child built an automated house for her pet hamster. So the door would open automatically every time the hamster went inside and out. In the process, she learned about sensing and control, but she was interested in it and she worked hard at it because she really cared about her pet hamster. Another girl at the same workshop loved to rollerblade uh, and she pulled a sensor into the rollerblades to keep track of how fast she was going and how far she was going. So she was using sensors in a very different way than the hamster house, but it was connected to her own interest. And and when the center gave her the reading of how many revolutions per second, she said, well, she wanted to know how fast she was going in miles per hour or kilometers per hour. So she had to do a conversion of the units. And when she was in the school classroom, she hadn't paid attention to those mathematics classes because she didn't care about it. But now she really cared about it. So she spent a lot of time figuring out how to get the sensor readings and convert the units to something that were really meaningful to her. So with this approach of creative thinking and supporting people in designing and creating in collaboration with others, we also have to support people building on their own interests. That leads to better learning results, but also leads to challenges in how to manage the classroom.